Okay, in this, in this uh, topic, we're going to talk about full order output feedback. So this approach is something called model-based controller. And basically, we're using an estimator in the control setting. And we're assuming that the model for the system is fairly accurate. And so we use that model in designing our estimator, right? We, we've seen that before. So when we get our estimator, then we assume that the states are accurately estimated and that thus can be used as if they were as if we were doing state feedback. So we saw that state feedback was powerful and could you could if your system was minimal or, or rather controllable, you could place the poles uh, eigenvalues anywhere you want. Um, so the, we're going to apply something called the certainty equivalence principle. That means if the states are accurately estimated, then then we can with have a the equivalence of the observer or estimate values uh, and use those in the in the control problem. So what would that look like? Here here is an example of what we could look uh, what we could use. So remember, our observer takes two inputs: it takes the output of the system and it takes the control signal in. The output is the estimate of the state. We use that estimate of the state in state feedback and we feed that back to form our control signal. So notice I have this little loop on the inside here that goes around. So here's our state, here's our estimator, and here's our observer feedback. We could then, so remember when we designed the estimate, the, the observer, we didn't specify what U was going to be. Now we're specifying what U is going to be. Now remember, when we when we check the error dynamics of this, the the U terms since this is the same control signal used in both, those terms canceled in the in the uh, error, and so it didn't matter what the control signal was. And so here in this case, we're going to use this as our control signal, and so the estimate of the state. Is still gonna is still gonna follow the estimate that it, it should follow even though now we have specifically chosen a uh, control law what is called a control law so this is this is a, a control law and the word law here in the control system setting the word law a lot of terms in this in this lecture we've talked about the fundamental theorem of contr control we've talked about the certainty equivalence principle we have some other principles and and now we're, I'm talking about a law the control law we can think of as the law like like the law of gravity the law of gravity um, is a law and it it's dependent upon two objects so you can change the dynamics of the law of gravity by changing for example the masses okay so in this case we can change the behavior of this system by appropriate choice of the controller. And so this is the control law that we are going to apply. Okay, so the question now is, we've, we're, we're saying that the estimates are good and therefore can be used in state feedback. How does that actually work? How does it, how do we know if it's going to work? Well, when we when we take this state model and, and apply it and form the overall closed loop system, so here's the closed loop. I mean, this is closes the loop. I'm going to have these as my states, and again, just just like we've seen before, where where we can combine two uh, two systems. So that I have this system and this system. This k is a constant gain. Um, but so I have these two systems and I combine them to find an overall state model. Here's the overall state model that we get using a, what's called a full order observer. By full order we mean that the order of the observer is of the same order as the system. Okay, so we've, we've talked about full order observers, reduced order observers. So our model based controller here is output feedback. So when we do that, this is this is now the state model we get. Here's our output and our, I'm sorry, our input. We've added a new input, R. And we can also look at the output Y is equal to C times X. 
which would be c and 0 times this vector. Okay, so we would have that kind of as our output. Okay, now the question arises. How can we know if this system is stable? How do we know that? How can we check to see if this system is stable? Well, we're going to go ahead and put... So now I have the system in these coordinates, x and x hat, and this is the state model we get. I'm going to now put them into the error coordinates. Okay, so what are the error coordinates? The error coordinates, so here, here's the original state model. The error coordinates, instead of using x and x hat, I'm going to use x and the error, which is the x and x minus x hat. Okay, so that corresponds to using this as a transformation matrix in, in going from the original states to the new state. So we're going to apply a similarity transformation to put the system into the error coordinates. And this is our transformation matrix and we can see that in fact it is it is a invertible matrix and in fact we can see that um, that is, this is a lower triangular matrix and so it's easy to calculate that the inverse of this matrix is going to be um, the inverse of this, the inverse of that, and and minus this times that times that inverse. So this is so the inverse of so this actually ends up being its own uh, inverse matrix. If you take this matrix and multiply by itself, you'll get. Um, you'll get the identity matrix. Yeah, so this times this gives i, this times that gives zero, this times that gives zero, this times that gives i. So this, the matrix is its own inverse, which is kind of unusual, but it's nice. So if I now apply this uh, similarity transformation to this system, this is what I get. Okay, this is what I get. In particular, what I get is I get this block of zeros down here, and I also get this zero down here. Now, in asking the question, is can we stabilize the system with this approach we've been taking? Well, now I have to look at the eigenvalues of this matrix. This matrix is block, upper block diagonal, uh, triangular, and so the eigenvalues of this overall matrix, so the star here refers to this, this overall matrix. The characteristic polynomial of this overall matrix is the characteristic polynomial of this and the characteristic polynomial of this part. So I can see that the, that the overall eigenvalues for the system are the eigenvalues of the state feedback portion involving the state feedback gain and the observer gain, the observer pole. So the state feedback poles and the observer gain poles. So that's really significant. So here's, so basically it works. Yay, it works. How does it work? Well, the system, closed loop eigenvalues separate neatly into the state feedback poles and the observer poles. So this separation is called the separation principle, that, that it separates into an observer portion and a controller portion. The observer poles separate from the state feedback. So in particular, the gains K and L can be chosen independently. Now it's very unusual when you have designs like this, where, where you have things inter, interrelated like this, that you would get the gains K and L appearing independently in in the problem but in this case because of what's called the separation principle they separate neatly into those different parts yay so in particular what this means is if the system is both controllable and observable so if our system is minimal then we can place all of the state feedback poles wherever we want. 
We can place all of the observer poles wherever we want. So we can place all of the closed loop poles wherever we want. Okay, we can definitely make it stable. We can, but we can also do other things with them. So that's cool. If the system is stabilizable and detectable, so in this case, stabilizable, but not necessarily controllable, and if it's detectable, that is, if we can form a stable, uh, a stable observer, then we can stabilize the entire system. So even if our system is unstable, we can still stabilize our system if it's stabilizable and detectable. Okay, so the system does not have to be controllable and observable in order for it to work. Okay, it just needs to be stabilizable and detectable. So this is the model-based control or full-order output feedback problem.